Hello, welcome back to another video. And this video is dedicated in its entirety to this wonderful structure here. This is Castlefield Viaduct. Now you'll hear me calling it a viaduct, a bridge, whatever. The video is about that thing there and it's truly and utterly wonderful. And it dominates this area completely. Now this is Castlefield and we're just to the west of the city centre and it's always been a kind of a strategic place if you like. Obviously it's where the Romans built the initial fort that Manchester eventually grew up around but uh, as a transport hub the Bridgewater Canal is over there and boats used to come from Worsley which is to the west of the city and bring coal into the city centre and it was unloaded here. Uh, in the Castlefield Basin and eventually more and more goods came from Liverpool from the docks and everything and this was like I say very strategic and probably fueled Manchester really and fueled the industry in Manchester but of course come the uh, mid 1800s the railways came and completely dominated the area and the railways came and just sort of like sat on top of the canals and you can see here there's no better place that demonstrates that than Castlefield to be honest with you um, so yes, that is Castlefield and it truly is a wonderful place for railway architecture. So what's going on here? Let me tell you what's going on. So this is the older bridge, this one here. This one that I'm making the video about is the younger of the bridges and basically these two lines took the uh, Cheshire lines into Central Station in Manchester, which is now GMEX, and they took the trains into the Great Northern Warehouse over on Deansgate. Now, apparently, when it was uh, this first, this younger one was opened, it says here there was um, initially 120 trains in an 18-hour period that were passing over the bridge. So that 120 trains in an 18 hour period escalated to 300 trains in an 18 hour period. So they built a second bridge and it was this one here. This huge mammoth structure here designed to create a relief for this slightly older bridge here. Now it's predominantly cast iron and steel and it was designed in 1888 by a Mr. M. W. G. Scott, and he was the chief engineer of the Cheshire Lines Committee and the Midland Railway, and he designed this massive relief bridge. It's a grade two listed structure, so they can't pull it down, but unfortunately, it's not in good health because of its design and because it's cast and it's steel, it is rusting considerably. They were gonna put the trams over this one uh, initially, back in the early 90s, but it was found out that the older bridge, just to the other side of it, was a, in much healthier condition. Now, if you like railway architecture, if you're really into railway architecture, you need to get yourself down to Castlefield in Manchester because this place is just an absolute dream for Victorian railway architecture. Now the bridge sits on these massive, 15 of these massive cast iron pillars that are 10 foot 6 inches in diameter. Down at the base, the 13 foot 6 inches in diameter. And they go um, down and they're embedded in Portland cement. Now. 20 feet below the ground where I'm stood now is the bedrock that they stand on and they stand on obviously the, the sandstone which is predominant round here. So in total the 20 feet from where they, they, they sit on the bedrock to the top that's 80 feet. Now here's some interesting facts for you. The contractors for the masonry and the brickwork were Messrs M. W. Wormsley and Company of Manchester and Southport and for the steel and the ironwork Messrs Heenan and Froud of Newton Heath. Um, here's a little, little uh, paragraph that I found, and it's about when they, they'd finished the viaduct and it was finally, um, the work was complete. It's, this is the, the, uh, the quote. The contracts may be said to have been finally completed on Wednesday, and in the afternoon of that day, a pleasing little ceremony took place on the viaduct at the point where it crosses the Manchester South Junction and Altrincham Railway. This was the fixing and clinching of the last rivet. Mr. Ombridge, on behalf of Messrs. Heenan and Froud, presented Mr. Scott with a handsome mahogany case lined with satin and containing two silver-plated hammers and two rivets, 
one gold and the other silver, as a memento of the occasion. A copper rivet was placed in the only remaining slot, and this was duly clinched by Mr Scott and Mr Heenan amid loud cheers. The work of putting down the rails and the fixing the signals will be finished in the course of a few days. The viaduct will then be surveyed by a government inspector and it's expected they will be open for traffic about the close of the present month. Okay, so here's an old aerial shot for you. You can see the three lines coming in there above Castlefield. The white arrow is our bridge that we're looking at. The yellow arrow is the older bridge. That was the original lines that came into a central station and that now carries the tram. And the green line there is the actual existing uh, British Rail line, the National Railways line. Um, another picture there is an overview. You can see our bridge there, indicated by the uh, white arrow. And you can see it just coming into Manchester. And you can see where it branched to the top right, you can see Central Station. And over to the left there, you can just follow the lines and you can see the Great Northern Warehouse. So they fed those two big, massive grey monoliths there. Another aerial view for you, you can see the lines coming in there again. Just where you can see where they split, one feeds the Great Northern just above. Uh, and below you can just see Central Station there. Now you're probably wondering, what's it like up top? Because it's disused now up on the top. Uh, so what's it like on the actual bridge? Well, we're going to go up there and we're going to have a look. Now, the explore I did was a couple of days ago. Um, it was a very fraught affair because, let's face it, we possibly shouldn't have been up there really. But, you know, you go up there, it was an amazing thing to see. Uh, we didn't need to climb over anything. It was very easy access. And all we did was take photographs and leave footprints. So we will be going up on the bridge to take a look at it. Now, there was a ceremony when they finished the bridge and what they, the final rivet they put in was apparently was a copper rivet and I want to find that copper rivet but I don't think I'll be able to because I imagine it's had probably had quite a few coats of paint since so I'll just take you up top and we'll just show you so we need to be fast and we're on the famous Castlefield Bridge um, you can see behind me where we are Connor's here my exploring buddy, say hello Connor. Hi hey, everyone. My public love you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to turn the camera around and we're going to go uh, along the bridge. It's 330 metres long. This is the younger of the bridges in Castlefield, believe it or not. I've not read up fully on it, but I'll do some pieces to camera off the bridge. We need to get on, explore it and get off basically. So here we go. So the floor's solid, isn't it? It looks to me. Yeah. This is truly amazing. The amount of times I've been on the um, tram and we've gone over this bridge, or we've gone over the adjacent bridge and I've looked at this and wanted to walk on it. It's really amazing to be here finally. I just don't hope, hope we don't get in trouble. I'll show you the view just off the bridge. And if you come over here, you can see down into Castlefield. I know we shouldn't, but we did. You're a long time dead. Get down, Connor, don't be silly. Anyway. Yeah, quick picture of that. It's completely mad up there, I'm telling you. <laughs> I want to go up there, but I'm also keen to get off because I think we're drawing attention to ourselves now and it's not a good place to be. It's a great place to be, but it's not a good place to get caught. But it's uh, all in aid of um, the heritage of Manchester, that's what it's for. Okay, he's going for it. 
It's wobbly that ladder. That's what we're going above. So let's go. Now I'm not very good with heights, so I ain't going right on the top like Connor did. Um, she's called me Fred Dugger. Okay, so there's a view. I'm not going up any higher. There's high voltage lines there. You can see the amount of rust on the bridge as well. And therein lies the problem that I'll probably tell you about. But uh, yeah. And he's back on the ground. <laughs> so there you go. So I'm not very good with heights. In fact, I hate heights. I can't do anything with heights. Put me in a tunnel in waders. I'm not too bad, but heights I'm terrible with. So we're just near the end of the bridge now. And as you can see, this is where we are. And the bridge just, well, the bridge is fenced off at the end down there. Um, and it rejoins, the line would have rejoined what is now the tram lines. So this is about as far as you can go really. Well you can go right to the fence but obviously we need to try and get off if we can. Well that was very enjoyable that. Uh, I enjoyed that. I've always wanted to come on this bridge. If you get on the tram, leave in Manchester and you go towards Cornbrook station from the city centre, you'll see this uh, bridge to your right or your left, depending on which way you're going. And it's uh, truly beautiful to be honest with you. And down below, it makes Castlefield look amazing. Uh, I absolutely love this bridge, so it's a bit of a privilege to come on it and walk on it. But obviously, it's also a bit of an adrenaline rush because <laughs> I think perhaps, even though we've not had to climb any fences, we've literally just walked on, I think perhaps we shouldn't be here. Mm. But all we're doing, He's taking photographs and leaving footprints. Safely. All good stuff. Anyway, that's the view ahead. So we're leaving the bridge now. And I should tell you more details down at ground level. Now, here's an interesting fact for you. When they were building the Castlefield Viaduct, they encountered something deep underground and I'll tell you what it was, it was a culvert for the River Medlock. There, just there, is James Brindley's masterpiece, the uh, Giant's Basin, which is an overflow for the canal here. Okay, so the canal overflows there. But over there, beyond the white bridge you can see there, is the River Medlock. The River Medlock comes into Castlefield from that direction. But it's directed in a culvert underneath Castlefield and it runs underneath this canal, believe it or not. And the Giant's Basin there, the overflow, flows into that culvert and then the Medlock carries on. Now, when they were building this thing, because obviously the canals came first, the railways came afterwards, that, well, one of those pillars, the, the foundations for one of those pillars actually stood over the culvert for the uh, River Medlock and what they had to do was they had to build like a he says they had to build um, a, a brick arch and sit the pillar on top now it all seems a bit dodgy that if they did that but I have read that that's what they did so I think it's possibly that pillar there that pillar pillar there or the one behind it if we just go over here you'll see the pillar behind it there okay so that's what they encountered obviously this was a big canal area at first and then the railways just basically came along and dominated it completely but yes deep deep underneath here is a culvert for the river medlock that runs underneath 
probably along here somewhere the basin overflows into it and then the medlock runs onwards so we'll really have to cover that again when we uh, do the medlock series down here but i think that's quite fascinating although i don't know how the hell they put one of those pillars over the top of a culvert now if we go up the uh, staircase here we can go up to track bed level and i can show you the uh, viaduct So we're up at track bed level now. This is the end of the bridge behind that fence. You can't really see it very well. And the, the bridge would have, the, well, the track would have come here into this car park. And there's a clue over there as to where it ran. In fact, you can see where it ran. I'll just show you. See where this new bit is here? There's the old part. That's a new sort of concrete bit. This would have been where the rails came. And if we go down there, I'll show you the clues that tell us it was a bridge. Well, we know it was a bridge anyway, but there's still a really good clue left and we'll go and take a look at it. You see how underneath the uh, bridges, they chose to do the sort of white, sort of tiled brickwork and stuff. You see that? Just come around there and I'll show you. You can see there, and that was probably just once a bridge and that was the un underneath of it. And our line ranched off there and went over the modern buildings that are there now and over to the Great Northern Warehouse. And that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.